Hello and welcome. Now here I am with a beautiful summer special with my lemon and lime water. I've not done a summer special before. I've only been doing holiday specials at, in the winter season, but I decided to do one this year because, you know, it's just a beautiful summer. <laughs> and, you know, we've been doing quite a few things here. PCBWay have now become a one-stop solution. Other than doing high quality PCB boards, they now do CNC services as well as 3D printing. If like myself, you're into doing electronics projects and require PCBs, then do check out their services on their website. So what I want to talk about today is the amount of car boot sales we've been going to <laughs> lately. And um, we've been finding some really good stuff. Now I've always been a fan of car boot sales. Uh, yeah, these things here, <laughs> you know, as you can see, you know, this is all sorts of junk too. <laughs> you, know, you have to wade through it all. And uh, yeah, on the surface, it may seem like junk, but to those of you who know, <laughs> you know what you're looking for, they can be quite, you know, a lot of treasure amongst all this stuff. <laughs> anyway, we indeed found some treasure. Um, I'm known to like, I mean, I used to go to car boot sales way back in the day as well, like in the late 90s and early 2000s. And I used to literally, I picked up an Amiga 1200 for like four pounds. And you know, like a, a Spectrum, ZX Spectrum Plus, uh, plus two, five pounds, six pounds. Yeah, that's it. Um, and it things like this, I even bought like an entire hi-fi stack um, back then also is Ferguson one. I remember buying it. That's the first ever hi-fi stack and this is when I realized actually this was kind of like 1997, 1998, this kind of time, this sort of time. I remember when I first tried this Ferguson hi-fi. This is when I realized that the old stereo, uh, sorry, the old um, silver hi-fis are way, way better than the actual, um, you know, the black one. <laughs> when I saw that it has independent recording levels and so forth, this is when I realized that, yeah, I'm, this is what I've been missing out on until this day. <laughs> so I got, to one, got myself one of this and I was really happy about it. I, I couldn't stop buying hi fis back then. I remember this. I used to <clears throat> take my poor brother along, <laughs> my oldest brother, and he used to carry the amplifiers for me because I stand with like, I mean, he got one himself and he was really happy with it for with his DJ equipment. So, well, he wasn't complaining <laughs> too much. But yeah, if you're watching, bro, thanks so much <laughs> for lifting all those. Um, they ended up with me being here and talking about that. <laughs> so I'll give you the credit too. Anyway, I absolutely loved car boot sales back then. You know, I not only got Amigas and so forth, I actually got hard drives and things like this for my Amiga. And you know, when you kind of like collect bits here, bits there, put it all together, it's like something, a sense of accomplishment, you know what I mean? And uh, yeah, that's what I used to feel back then. So yeah, I want to do this here because this summer, uh, summer always runs in carpet sales, of course, because that's when they're mostly on. And um, yeah, I want to do it this time and I did find some good stuff this time. So I want to do like a summer special. Uh, the first ever time, you know, I've moved across the country and the first ever thing that caught my eye was actually quite something. And as you can see, this dude here, I didn't expect to find something like this because I thought all the um, retro and vintage stuff was long gone my where I'm from <laughs> the car boot sales over there you know yes I have found a few things vintage things there but it's like you really really have to look I mean actually one of them was a Commodore 64 I won't lie. <laughs> it was when I went with Rich back then and um, yeah we ended up with a box Commodore 64 and we thought it was worth it just for the SID chip <laughs> you know if not anything else but yeah it was fully working so yay anyway this is my first ever find here now this, as you can see, is some sort of color television, actually, <laughs> and a an radio, an alarm clock, all in one. Now, I would not mind this being my at my bedside back then. Now, as you can see, there is something beautifully retro and 80s about this, um, which is actually what 
caught my eye in the first place. And uh, we're just gonna love me saying this, but there is something very Atari ST-esque with this um, diagonal line thing going on here. Yes, Rich, you can get excited now. Anyway, the only thing wrong with it is, first of all, this needs freaking lubing because it's crackly, but the actual on, as you can see here, it, it, the switch is broken here. So this does need some seeing do, you know, so I'm gonna have a restoration on this later on. And then the next thing, as I was, uh, as we were walking along, I got a bit of a reputation of like jumping on and seeing like a box of wires and like gravitating towards it. I spotted these, like with stalls ahead. They are speakers, they are vintage speakers. I know they're gonna be absolutely tack, you know, because you know, vintage speakers more often than not tend to be not so good um, because you know, it's one thing I'd say speaker technology has um, improved. But the reason why I got these is first of all, the look of them, <laughs> you know, secondly, I can literally replace the drivers or even just use this as a project box, you know what I mean? It's not just these two. It was actually two pairs of speakers we got. Uh, the two pair, the other pair is already in use. Um, another hi-fi system has been set up in um, Rich's son's room, so he's using them. But yeah, this this pair I decided to get, and both of them were just like five pounds, <laughs> you know. So I just thought, why not? Now, from the same stall as the speakers, uh, we actually found some. This is something Rich jumps onto. Actually, we both jump onto. We found some cameras, Polaroid cameras. It's a land camera. This one is a Polaroid 600 camera. And we got this one also. This is actually from another stall, the, the opposite stall. We decided to get that. I've got one very similar to this already, if you remember from my um, camera collection video, which if you haven't seen, I'll link in the description below. We have this, you can get film for this interesting looking one. Rich and I are both into photography but Rich has more experience with um, analog cameras like this with the film cameras and so forth. There you go. I got there finally. <laughs> Simple as that. But yeah. He's got more experience with film and cameras even though I've done film in the past. Um, he's you know, done it for much longer than I have as in like he's spent more time with film than he has with digital. I recently show me how to do this because I'm kind of a little bit confused by this. So, without dazzling myself. <laughs> right, what do you do? Push okay, up. right. Then you read the manual. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the manuals are at the back here. There we go. Right, so, let's put that there for now. Right, so, now what do you do? Because I can see lots of... Well, it's all numbered. Right. Start with one. Okay. So you push, push that up. And then oh, oh, oh. oh, oh. Wow. Okay. There you go. So that's one. So do you put both of them? Because that says one, two. Depends if you're left handed or right. Okay, right. So, this. <laughs> so two is this. Hold on. It shouldn't two be cocking the shadow? Well, we've not actually used it yet, so I'm not quite <laughs> okay. sure. I've not read the manual yet. Right, okay. And then. And you've got two sides, so this is your rangefinder. Oh, okay. So this is the rangefinder one? Yep. So that's to get your range, and this right. is for taking. I that's see. your taking screen. So to focus. Okay. Oh. Left and right. So if you put your two fingers on there. Okay. Well, that's really good. It's a shame we don't have film for this. What sort of film does it need? Uh, it's pack film. Pack film. Peel apart film. Ah, oh, see. But they stopped making it a while back, mm. so prices are stupid right now. Yeah. Yeah. If anyone knows anywhere to get packed film. Oh, if, if they're starting to do it again and we're not aware of it, let us know because uh, we'd be interested. How much was this? It's about five, wasn't it? I think we've gotten down to four. Four, okay. You know, because we're cheap skirts. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just like, 
uh, I do this, I start bartering as well because um, there's one thing when I went to Morocco and I, I went in the, um, the Grand Souk, Jamal Fina Souk and uh, everyone was just like, you, you barter like a Berber woman. <laughs> I'm an Arab woman, so I mean, we probably barter the same. <laughs> but, yeah, this says that. With the Polaroid 600 camera, we got some 600 film, which was there as well, which to be honest, I should not keep in the sun, I should put it in the fridge. And also some flash cubes here. You can see there, boots 199, <laughs> way back. Stickers still there as well, the classic boots uh, logo and sticker. I've always thought about these um, flash cubes, and and literally it feels like a waste because what you're doing is you're blowing um, incandescent bulbs. It's nice having this, and you know a bit of history, but I'm so glad that <laughs> they improved flash technology for this sake. Take this out of the sun, take all these out of the sun because it's getting quite hot actually. And um, I don't want to damage this stuff. This has been in the sun for a little while. Okay, that's getting really hot. It's actually um, supposed to be 40 degrees. Um, 40 degrees C here. It's not reached quite that. I think it's like not mid 30s, but I'd say like 32, 33. I mean, I know what 40 degrees feels like. I'm from a hot country myself. I know I love summer and everything, and I know people from uh, the Middle East and my friends from there and family know that, you know, it, how hard it actually gets there and they complain about summer. And I totally get that. I totally understand. But, you know, it's not that bad here. <laughs> and summer's just, you know, not just for the heat, but summer is just my favorite season. I'll put some um, hibiscus flowers in here, which is why it's become pink now all of a sudden. Freaking hoverfly, I'm not a flower. Leave me alone. <laughs> Sorry. It's just fl it's flying right in my face. Anyway, so the second time we went to the carpet, I mean, we didn't find as much as we did in the first time. You know, we got that nice TV and the clock ra TV, clock radio, and don't know. <laughs> as rich as mum said, it washes, does it wash the dishes for you? <laughs> anyway, there's some CD racks, like 50p, literally. So that, I still got a price. <laughs> so I think it was just a pound. A pair of Sennheiser headphones. I mean, they're a bit used. I'm definitely gonna like wipe them down with um, chlorhexidine or something like this, because I don't want to use um, um, isopropyl alcohol in these, because it'll ruin the um, finish. Anyway, I was expecting these not to work. Uh, when I brought them home, I thought, you know, it's gonna have like a break in the wire somewhere in the cable, sorry and uh, but they work perfectly So I'm wondering if someone's just taken someone else's thing just to sell off and You know left that person kicking and screaming wondering why because these sound amazing and yeah two pounds <laughs> in the Huge car, huge one we went to. It's the only thing of interest was this, and this is sold for five pounds as well. It's um, a pair of car speakers. Now the reason why I got these is um, I want to use the actual speakers. I mean, one of them. I don't know what's wrong with these. I haven't tested them or anything like this. What I was thinking is, you know, maybe doing something with this. These speakers. If they don't sound that great, maybe. Um, Installing those in here and you know seeing what happens. There seems to be ah I can feel a lot of heat here. <laughs> seems to be um one I can replace it with this and um perhaps even add a tweeter on it or something, you know.
wonder how he mentioned it, but the Christmas we wanted it. Now it is um, fourth and recent time we've just came back from the garbage, so actually was a really good one. Um, we well, the first thing I noticed from like two stalls away. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I have kind of a radar detector for it, <laughs> but, um, well, I saw some cassettes and I kind of like dived on them. I was like, bitch, look, cassettes, come, <laughs> you know, and uh, we got like, um, literally this guy was selling cassettes for like 10p each. Um, a lot of them were like pre-recorded, but there were some amongst the pre-recorded that were actually, you know, they were, and to be honest, I'm more interested in you know these types like the recordable ones then pre-recorded ones because you know that's how youth is spent <laughs> just recording of the radio and of other sources and by that i mean amiga of course and uh, you know <clears throat> anyway so <laughs> we um got like one pound 90. <laughs> so in nine must have been 19 of them right another phillips Another TDK D90. I mean, they are really good types. It's just that we are, both Rich and I are tape collectors, right? So we like collecting new and interesting types. I've always been into that, and so has he. And we've met and kind of like joined our collections in the one, just morphed them all into one. And um, so it's the first time I've ever shared my collection with somebody else. And it's nice because you end up getting like, tips which you never had before but at the same time it's like I'm not used to it so <laughs> I better get used to that classic TDK well it's D46 but yeah I mean there's uh, Agfa there and there's even Alpha which um both <laughs> both uh, Rich and I keep calling Alpha Alpha oh we thought Alpha Alpha when we saw this and um that reminds us of of Mice and Men <laughs> the story we both studied in school we each studied in school. Anyway, so we have, yeah, Alpha Alpha tape, which I've never seen before. <laughs> um, Agfa, which I would like Agfa. Bush, I don't think I've, have, I've got one of these. See, so he's not called Billy Joel from now on. He's called Billy Joel. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna call him now. Anyway, not that I'm into, you know, his music. I've not heard much, to be honest. Anyway, so that's Boots. Got one here. Now then, amongst all this, all these 10 p each, which to be honest, some of them are pretty decent. I mean, like, you know, you can get decent recordings on. Yes, I know people think Ferrex are like a lot of caca, but they're not. Something recorded on this um, D90 would um, sound amazing on my Iowa. And, you know, people complain about cassettes saying, oh, they come out on the machines and all this stupid thing. It's, I've had that said to me so much. And actually, the amount of times that's happened in my all my time of being alive which is like coming to you know 40 years now <laughs> i can count on one hand you know the amount of times that's happened to me amongst this one pound this entire entirety of like you know 19 tips for like one pound 90 you will notice you know tapes very well that there's this one here and then there's this one here now this one is a sony us us ul this one it's a mouthful it's a sony uxs and it's a type 2 chrome and this is a really good type this is equivalent sony equivalent of the sa90s i'd say so that i'd say 10p that's worth it for 10p now this that's tip or that's tip I call it that's because that's what my brother used to call it. Notice metal position type four. When I came home, I said to Rich, "Look, look, this tip teleported out of my hand so fast into Rich's hand, 
so it's his now as, long, as well as this UXS because he's not had one he's, he, I've got a couple of these he doesn't have one and he likes Sony ones so yeah these two are now riches <laughs> but in a way they're kind of ours because it's our collection so no, no. <laughs> anyway so we got this and not only this um, we on the same stall the same guy actually let's take these out of the sun because I don't want them to be damaged I noticed this thing and I asked him how much it was for but it's a JVC VHSC video camera or camcorder call it now this yes I know what you're thinking back to the future this is not the exact model but it's actually a few models ahead of it so I think the one on I used to have it I used to have the one which um, you know he uses in um, back to the future right <laughs> it's the GR C3 I believe but I used to have it and you know something it went faulty and I think my dad th threw it out <laughs> I remember it going faulty my dad I still got the VHSC cassettes from it but the camera itself is gone you know it's the same series though as you can see this thing I wasn't sure if it was working um, it was 12 along with the cassettes he gave it for 10 so it actually comes with I mean there's one VHSC in there actually he didn't know um, what I'll do is if there's any footage of his there I think I'm gonna like digitize it and then next time we go there and I see him I'll just give him on CD or something like this so he can you know because you don't know what footage that he's got on here that he's forgotten about or you know again with these JVC's just like the Hitachi one in the um, holiday special um, again if you haven't seen that uh, it's quite a like a big special so you know I've linked in the description below so just like that it has a proprietary cable here a uh, proprietary plug here for the AVL I've already made a lead of this for the Hitachi however that is still on the other side of the country which <laughs> and, and I still need to bring it over here and I didn't get a chance yet I've ordered a VHSC um, head cleaning cassette so hopefully that is that and it's not a bigger problem like a damaged head or anything like this I mean it's pretty decent if I can get this working I'll be happy uh, for the amount I got it for I could use it for like Amiga and Genlock and so forth moving to the other stall we went to um, this one Rich actually noticed uh, before me so yeah we both got an eye for certain things <laughs> um, but I would have noticed as well because we're both into this stuff I got some uh, retro computing goodies so I got a Mega Drive pad a Sega Master System light gun Lemonata out of the way <laughs> for a second. A really good condition Dreamcast controller because I do have I do have a Dreamcast. I've got two controllers and they're both Japanese controllers, um, really nice ones. However, one of them seems to have like a problem with you know it's a loose connection here. Now I haven't tested this out this this out because the actual Dreamcast is still over there across the country, <laughs> you know. Um, so I need to bring my Dreamcast next time along with my camcorder and all the bits and along with quite a few other things. <laughs> so yeah, and uh, Rich noticed this game, a PSP, it's PES 6 Pro Evolution Soccer. <laughs> um, I'm not into... Oops, freaking fly. I'm not into... <laughs> Hoverfly. I'm not into um, football myself, but Rich is, so... He noticed that, that's cool. Um, Sega Saturn, because I have one. And um, again, Rich noticed this, he said this is something he would play. Uh, we're actually quite intrigued by the Sega Saturn. It's still over there, I still need to bring it. So that I need to, it needs seeing do. So that's amongst my collection, Sega Saturn. We have a, normally I stay clear of Nintendo, right? I am not a big fan of Nintendo at all, but Rich because of Rich's Game Boy I mean I know Game Boy has been the one when I saw back someone play on it back in the day I was like okay can I have one please because you know I was just little and I just saw it you know it's a good platform it's got a good games library so has thingy but 
rich has one, right? So I played on it and then I ended up like getting a Game Boy Advance, <laughs> which, which encouraged me to get. Um, so yeah, I broke the uh, Nintendo mold. <laughs> <laughs> from so I, there'll be a little bit no I'm not saying a lot I'm saying probably just like one thing from Nintendo and that'll be my Game Boy Advance so we got this James Bond for that now uh, for the Dreamcast we we were given Soul Calibur in this deal all oh, this is one deal one single deal by the way and Dreamcast um, what's that called Choo Choo Rocket this is um, again Rich I didn't know about this uh, Rich picked it up because he said it's a really good game so that, all this, including that, 20 pounds. It's perfect. Actually, it's a bargain because, you know, it's, I'm really impressed. It's like, uh, it was a really good um, day we had in <laughs> the carpet, but I got quite a good deal here. So most summary things I've been doing, <laughs> this one's a bit industrious and not something I would normally do, but, you know, some things need to be done. Actually, we've been so flooded in lots of things, we've had to sort out at once. Some reasons unpleasant, other reasons not so much. With regards to this house, certain others have had the pleasure of many helpers around them and the luxury of starting fresh. Rich and I had to go through a teardown and rebuild process and there has been a lot to deal with. But you know, whatever life throws at you, you sometimes just have to roll your sleeves up and just get on with it. It's not about the over-polished outer show that everyone sees. It's about the inner substance and not being a prisoner to others' opinion and one's own ego. It's really that simple. No matter what you do, those who want to see the best in you will choose to do so. The ones who wish to see the worst in you will choose to do so. Their choice, their problem, their loss. You make the best of whatever the situation is and what you've been blessed with. While working on this video, we also went back to my old place to pick up more stuff. You get to see my old room and the cluttered state it's in now. There is a little sadness for sure as there have been many memories I've created in there. And with some of you on my channel also. But when one chapter ends, another begins, and if you refuse to move on, you'll be trapping yourself in one place while everyone around you moves on. Life's too short to waste by dwelling on petty things, which will never matter. So we count our blessings and make the most of it. And in the end, no matter how it may seem, it's all on you. You reap what you sow. Sometimes we look back and reminisce and become nostalgic. I think I'm guilty of that more than most. But even I, someone who cannot shut up about the feeling of nostalgia and can't stop feeling strong pangs of it, would not want to go back and relive it all again. Yeah, it's a bit complicated, maybe a bit of a paradox. I feel it's due to the finite nature of life on Earth. Sure, if I could go back and revisit for a short period of time, take more photographs and videos while I'm there. Tell my past self not to get talked into selling my Amiga Tower. <laughs> to enjoy herself a bit more. Maybe tell my past self to stop worrying and enjoy the ride a little more. Sure, I may feel that times were better back then overall. I still believe that, especially with regards to the state of the world right now. But I still wouldn't want to go back and relive through the hellish crap which I've had to live through all over again whilst being aware of it all the second time around. In the present moment, I use my strong feelings of nostalgia and longing for certain specific things in my past as the fuel and energy for the passion I have when creating these videos. Channeling all that energy, love and feeling into creating something new. Let's face it, life itself and the one behind it, it's too big for any of us to comprehend. Answers to things aren't always simple nor black and white. 
nobody knows everything. Even if they try to make that claim, present themselves as all-knowing, I think the answer lies in each of our individual journeys. One shouldn't dictate or try to control the path of another, even though many fools out there try to, whether it's by oppression or by manipulation or whatever it could be. In any case, the defect is on the one who's trying to control and their uncontrollable submission to their own ego, which, let's face it, the ego is only the finite part of us all. There is a tendency for some to control another's path or beliefs in order to reinforce one's own narrative. Ego is indeed unstable, being aware of its own finite state. It constantly needs grounding, someone thinking independently, outside of ego, regardless of affiliation, for this reason can be seen as a threat. Heart and soul set free, ego chains down and requires validation of its own existence. It's a dangerous foundation to build one's home on. To stay stuck at its level will be like a curse. It's like a dark bottomless well where one keeps falling deeper and deeper. Things just keep getting darker at this level. And it doesn't have a good end. It never has a good end. Our full potential is beyond the ego and its whims. One needs to look beyond it. Which you all know, well, most of you anyway, what it looks like now with, I'd say, two thirds of the stuff gone. Thankfully, I still have my family and friends here and there's no rush or things would have been much tougher. So I'm really thankful for that. I still need to wait through stuff and get rid, but little by little. We also went to a park with this massively high slide. I mean, going up it and climbing to get to the top was scary on its own. <laughs> Rich, you're coming! Yes, you are! And I don't do heights particularly well. Anyway, this is Wayne or Electronscape of the Sidbox. Right. Wow, well, it's such a crap position that it may have just erased all that video. Really? It erases it? Oh, watch your head. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. You're going down first? No, you're going first. I'm waiting for Alice. Oh, hey. <laughs> right, come on. Wow. Okay. Okay. <laughs> say do something that scares you once in a while and you guessed it I wanted to go again oh it feels like an Amiga exactly like an Amiga <laughs> oh by the way it is compatible with the Atari ST as well. So yeah, when you yeah. turn it on, you press the two buttons down, turn it on, and it's uh, Atari. Oh, Brilliant. This feels like an I remember day. you talking about it implementing it's, that. It's there. It works Brilliant. now. <laughs> well, here I got a little update on our Sidbox project also. Wayne has been working very hard on it, the best he can. The menu and graphics interface you see there has actually been designed by myself on my Amiga. The first time I've seen it actually on screen, it's kind of crazy seeing it there. I really need to get things sorted here and start designing the outer case for the sitbox. 
and also some graphics and sprites uh, for a couple of built-in games. I actually miss working on it. As you figured, my life is packed full of projects. <laughs> you know when you've got so much you want to do, and there's just not enough minutes in the day to do it. My own fault for being into so many things. <laughs> oh, you've changed the music I, in it. I had to because I wanted to check to see if it could do it. Oh, okay. To exit out of it. Is that another... For... What? The track. This is the one by the guy. Uh, what's his name? The chief. Oh, yeah. Wicklin. Is it in the Vaughan Pit? I think it might be Wicklin, yeah. Oh, because it sounds like Wicklin. Oh, it's that. Yeah. You're, you're, um... <laughs> so there's two parts going on here. Um, the top half is uh, smooth scrolling. It smooths it. I've got it working on the LCD, so it smooths it mm. and then shifts it and then it smooths again. That's why it looks like it's doing that. Mm. And the bottom one, that's not smooth scrolling, that's just it doing by character by character. So, oh, so you can see what it's doing. <coughs> and the bar going up and down, that's changeable interrupts. Maggie Drive. It's perfectly. Yeah, this is Sidbuck's taken to the next level. It really has, it's just... Oh, you got the... It's like every little detail that's just perfect, it, how it original is. It was tough. There's a couple of times where it desyncs a bit, but I don't quite understand why, but... Uh, have you got um, Soundtrack of Pro working? Go back a directory. Oh yeah, and Med works as well in it now. Oh my god, <laughs> tracks. Zaman. And it saves it. You can see that flash blue light which mm. is writing and reading from it. But the only way you can get the mods to work It's not complete though, mm. not one hundred percent certain that I just heard happen. something then which is a little different. Of course. And <laughs> preferences. Audio mode, a separator bar, full stereo, mm -hmm. mono, switches the way around. Oh, so it's yeah. yeah. So it's just by doing whichever you want, and you've got three sets. Wow, what look at that. <clears throat> it's nice, a neat... smooth. Like silky smooth. Yeah, it really is. That was hard work, lots of. Um, one for time if I can find a way because it's hard to see. Right, so if I go in there, all the way over to here, there's a hidden section here. Toilet! Yeah. <laughs> see, that's the original feature, you have to have that. It's got memories. I haven't got the, uh, the player working properly. We've got that and we've also got... Well, that was for a <laughs> okay, so in my old room at the moment, and I'm packing stuff from here to take over there. Now this box here has already got like project parts here for like a future project. I'm not gonna tell you. I'm gonna keep the surprise. I'm not gonna show too much of this box, so you don't kind of like try and figure it out. Because you know, I like to keep surprises for you guys to do that. Another thing I'm going to take is the Dreamcast. I want to say thank you so much again to James O'Hara for gifting me this. Um, I haven't forgotten. I never will forget. I'm quite a sentimental type of person. I remember all the gifts that, that people and friends give me. So yeah, thank you so much James. Right, so this is going with us. And so is this. A gift from Dr. Woro <laughs> and Christine Glinzer. Thank you so much again. And my books from childhood, <laughs> well, teen years, I should say. Of course, <laughs> I'm not gonna forget this. This is very special, that one. I mean, I must have had this, you know, in childhood because they're passed downs from my oldest brother. I remember buying this from stationery box in mid 90s. <laughs> I still have it. I mean, it's tattered the freak. And I bought it for my Amiga, but yeah, I loved it. And I still have it, and I'm gonna keep it. I had this when I was like nine or ten years old. I don't think it'd um, be enough for the amount I have now. <laughs> of 
course, I'm going to take my um, camcorder, the Hitachi one, the, the um, VHS camcorder, personal CD player, of course, my Sega Saturn, Japanese one, one of my old Maxter hard drives. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I'm gonna make use of this in one in a future project. No, 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 I'm not telling you what it is. I mean, I've got a little clue, but you don't know completely. Yush, are you coming with me this time? Yeah, I'm definitely taking this. <laughs> this is even back then. I knew Alba was the one to avoid. <laughs> so I used to avoid it, but it was this one thing which Alba had, and it was a. Personal stereo with um, <laughs> personal stereo with a Tetris game, and I used to love this thing. This is uh, my teenage girl years. <laughs> yes, I'm taking this, and I'm gonna restore it. Another thing I'm definitely gonna take is Senor Sanyo, and th this is probably gonna be one of my favorite um, tape recorders that I've actually dealt with it's just it sounds beautiful and I, you know you love known a restoration uh, I did many years back but it does need another seeing do and that is because the mortar is acting funny and I think it's because I put a slightly tighter belt on and the mortar just keeps going fast and slow so I think I need to replace the mortar well loop get the mortar or replace it one or the other anyway so I'll be taking this uh, because we, uh, Rich and I had some fun with it uh, last night in the spare room. We were on the shortwave bands and we were like listening to stuff from around the world and recording tidbits here and there, the whatever we found. And it was actually quite fun. <laughs> I enjoyed that. Right, which is not something. I'm not gonna go through every single thing I'm gonna take because I'll be here for ages. Because <laughs> there's so much I'm, gonna, I'm like gonna take. But some things I wanna keep a surprise, right? So if you excuse me, I will finish off packing. <laughs> it was a short but lovely stay here where I did more filming and we explored areas new to Rich and I revisited all the areas. And uh, as life is, we're now heading all the way back with a car full of more goodies. <laughs> explored this camcorder and I've tried it out um, unfortunately I mean the actual cam camera side of it works but the actual tape side of it the, vi the video player side of it or video recorder side of it doesn't seem to there's just a static there whenever you record on it or whenever you try and play back from it it's just static um, however the actual you can see through the camera and all that when you turn it on camera mode so it just doesn't record and I've, I mean, obviously it's going to be something like the tape head, mostly. That's going to be the issue with that, uh, the recording head and the play head. So that, uh, I think, is probably most likely the play head. I mean, at the very least, I can use it as just a simple composite camera. But I would really like to kind of see, I mean, it's a really nice camcorder and I would really like to try and get this working. However, you know, all is not lost because um, even if I cannot get this working, 
Um, if you remember the last um, special which I did, which is the holiday special, in there I showed what I got from a, a car boot sale previously, and that is this big Hitachi <laughs> one. Now we're moving from VHSC to actual VHS tips, full size ones. So, as a lot of you will probably remember these, and uh, you know, I kind of like feel like using them again never thought I would I know one of my friends uh, used, has always used them and still does on this retro hawk what I'm gonna have to do is just like shift over there you know because I don't want stuff melting and I'm gonna end up looking like an orange if I stay in the sun too much this uh, VHS movie is 600 and uh, we have a battery pack for it and also a charger and also power pack, charger or power pack. Um, I'll explain in a second what all that is. Let me just put this away. You can actually, I mean, you charge the battery here, the battery pack here. You can select the charge, which charges the battery. Or you can select the video, which, um, you know, powers the video via this. So you can just like, just like the battery pack, you can slide this on the video. The only problem is it ends up being mains powered and you cannot carry it around or anything like this. So literally you just, you don't have this massive thing and it does weigh quite a bit making an already big unit even bigger and heavier on the shoulder <laughs> so i mean just pick it up this thing takes the entire um i mean the battery pack is as with all of these the battery pack is going to be damaged by now i mean i believe they're nikad batteries which weren't good to begin with but obviously they don't age well at all this only lasts maximum five minutes due to its age and uh, it's 12 volts 800 milliamp hours and then it's these modern battery packs that you can get these lithium-ion ones that come with a charger it's like a fraction of a size almost quadruple the capacity of this friend here so let's see if my theory would actually work <laughs> here but first of all I just want to make sure the polarity is right. Okay, so this is DC in center positive, and this one, it doesn't say if it's center positive or negative, so let's find out, shall we? Most likely it's going to be center positive because most things are these days. Okay, it's showing 11 volts, and yes, center and center positive. The um, DC jack is the wrong one. <laughs> no, there was something in there. Okay, so I found the larger DC jack. It's like two sizes. The larger one that actually fits in here. So what I can do is I can just, in fact, I can even shorten this wire, this cable, sorry, and not have it so long. I'll just do it like that because this is going to be solely used for that. So I can literally just put it there. With this length here. Make sure this is switched off because we don't want to short it. No idea where my wire strippers are at the moment. We'll be using them around the house to do housey stuff. I don't know if we've just put them. Probably just at the side over there. But anyway. volts not 12 let's hope it's enough I mean it says 12 volt output but it should be anyway 
well. So far, so good. It operates, turns on. Well, it does work. But I'm wondering if that one valve is bothering it. Because the um, viewfinder doesn't seem to come on, unless I've just done something silly and turned it off. The eject mechanism turns on. It's like 11 volts, why? Unless it's not fully charged. It's the only thing I can think of right now. I ordered some Velcro here. And that I'm gonna stick on to the back of this and the battery itself. And that should do it. I mean, it's enough Velcro. Well, you know, this was advertised at capacity 3,000 milliamp hours. The cynical side of me thinks, I don't know. Is that? We'll see. I mean, if it lasts a fair amount of time, if it, as in if the camera lasts running for a long time. I'll be happy with that. Okay, so. Let's get the Velcro or the hook and loop, as some of the bros call it. Well, it's, this one itself is actually Velcro, <laughs> but I've seen some hook and loop stuff before. Let's stick the um, the rougher part on the battery. Okay, so we have here our battery pack. That's actually quite. I'm quite sturdy. Plug it in there. And this is charging wire and this one you just plug it in the back. And there we go. I don't have to carry this huge massive battery pack. <laughs> you dropped it on my mouth. Huge massive battery pack. It just like almost doubles the weight. Well no, the battery pack itself doesn't, the charger pack does. Actually, let's check the bad, the um, voltage again. It's been charging for a little while now. 11.67, so it is climbing up. Let's just stop. Darn it. The moment I press play on the video, the entire thing shuts off. It's almost like a huge battery drain. Okay, I'm gonna give this a full charge while we move on to goofing around with something else. So, decisions, decisions. <laughs> I've been busy working on this summer special for over a month now and filmed lots of things. I've been doing quite a few things actually, but only when putting together the video itself, I realized it's gonna end up huge and I cannot fit everything that I've done in one single video unless I make the video like two hours long, which is, you know, I think it's gonna be too much. A little more, who knows? Anyway, so instead of making this uh, video that long, I've decided to split it into two videos. So you get a double dose of my summary antics. <laughs> I will continue the result of the camcorder and the restoration of this clock radio color television dishwasher thing <laughs> in the next part, in addition to the other goodies which I've got planned. So I hope you've enjoyed this. If you can't wait for the next video and one more of this, check out the link below or at the end of the video for the holiday special 2020, which is similar in nature actually, that is pretty long. So lots for you to enjoy there. For now, I will say adios! Thanks so much to all my patrons for supporting my channel, especially to you very kind top tier supporters of mine who deserve an extra special thanks. Rich Garbet, Electronscape, Axel Dominator, Aaron Metcalf, Corey Ostman, Mark Bosak, Starlight Minako, and Chris Sebelinski. Have a lovely evening, everyone. Until next time, adios!